Hello, good evening. My name is Callum from DX Commander, and I want to talk about takeoff angles for receive and transmit uh, tonight because I've been basing my computer model, software modeling of my takeoff angles at five degrees above the horizon. And I've had a couple of debates or arguments, if you like, with people who say that I shouldn't be basing my maths at five degrees. It actually doesn't matter as long as you base one antenna at five degrees off the horizon and the next antenna at five degrees off the horizon, then you go, well, that one's going to be better than that one mm, in the main. Now, I need to, <laughs> I forgot to fire something up here, which I've got to do now. So sorry about this. This is MMANA. Okay, and what I need to do is just put Z2 at oh, 5.2. So this is a computer model of a vertical. Um, and I'm just uh, beginning of wire. Oh, thank goodness for that. Nothing off the ground. 14 degrees. We should get roughly SWR. That's okay. That was quick, wasn't it? Um, so this is a, a vertical antenna i can maximize this for your delight vertical antenna on the screen on average medium ground nothing special not by the sea okay so the dilemma is a lot of people say well, why don't you measure the gain where that red dot is and it says it up the top here 0 0.9 db at 20 degrees off the horizon well i could just as easily measure it at 10 degrees Oh, horizon it says minus 1.7 there but what i found is getting the really low angle stuff was very hard so i started measuring all my models at where's it 175 degrees or five degrees off horizon it says there minus 5.9 sounds not a lot however we have to appreciate and i'll show you a couple of research papers now and i'm a bit annoyed because there was one research paper which i read a modern paper done in the last five years where they built this massive array of antennas and actually measured all the signals and they could tell that the the you know the vast majority of this signal is coming in at three degrees vast majority of that signal is coming in at five degrees and so on so on for dx in other words multiple hop stuff over 1500 miles or 2000 ish kilometers was coming in between three and eight degrees of horizon which actually is one of the reasons i swapped to measuring my models at minus five uh, five degrees off of the horizon because if i built a three element a array in software or i wanted to measure one thing against another and i'm measuring it up here at 20 degrees there sometimes wasn't much difference. The real grunt is happening lower down, okay? So anyway, that's a computer model. Let's just minimize that at the moment because I wouldn't mind actually building another one in a minute, maybe a dipole or something. We'll just show you the difference, whatever. This is a 1961 paper. Now, unfortunately, like a lot of these papers, it's, it's uh, beautifully done. There's a lot of data in here, which I'm not going to show you at all. But at the very bottom, I put my glasses on. It says less than two degrees provided on average signals nearly 10 dB stronger. It's interesting that in 1961, they were finding that the long haul stuff, you know, between 6,800 and 8,400 kilometers, you know, so we're looking at five, six, seven thousand miles, were coming in at angles of less than two degrees. Okay, so there's an interesting one here. And I'll put these links in the description below. You can have a little read if you want. There's this one here, which is a slightly newer. Um, I think this is an ARRL 2011. Here we are, QEX. So I hope he doesn't mind me doing this. This is the graph bottom right that I want to focus into. So let's just maximize the screen a bit here. So what he's got here is oh, up the side, right? It says percent probability, just there, percent probability, 5, 10, 15 percent. And across the bottom, we've got the elevation angle in degrees for 80 to 10 meters. So that's 3.5 megahertz up to 30 megahertz 
angles of arrival okay so what it's saying that on let's say three degrees we've got a higher probability of picking it up uh, than we have at 20 degrees i mean i think we all know that on the surface most of us understand that signals come in not straight down they come in at an angle but if you look at from 10 degrees which is across the bottom here down to zero the bulk of our signals are coming in between you know one and eight and in fact the research paper i read said it was between the bulk of the and the bulk of the signals coming in on dx is going to be between three and eight that doesn't to say say that between 10 and 20 degrees you can't receive anything because by the look of it just oh, looking at the surface area here you know 15 to 20 percent of our signals is coming in at a higher angle right by the way this is not sporadic e this is traditional hf dx all right which is um a camera's just stopped who cares and that's why i focus at at five degrees because your trans you remember your transmit takeoff angle is probably going to be the same as the same as your receive tank uh, take off uh, receive angle because it, it's like a mirror isn't it you can't bounce a signal there and expect it to go uh, along like this tropospheric and sporadic e does a bit of that you can go up and get lost and be and ducked before it comes back down again and the research papers i was reading later earlier today was suggesting that on the six meter 50 megahertz band sometimes that uh, can be up as high as 15 degrees certainly not much higher all right so there we are that's why i base i just think it's a very firm understanding of basing my maths at five degrees and this graph particularly here bears it out for me anyway because the bulk of the signals are coming in between about two and ten by the look of it here certainly two and nine right on this one i think you got a bit of light coming in the camera sorry about that so people then say oh you, i've got mountains you know a couple of miles away what do i do you still get out all right you're just not going to get out as well as the guy who has a the flat takeoff angle and by the way some of the research i was reading today is suggesting that horizontal horizontally polarized transmission antennas can have more loss particularly in the first few kilometers at very low angles all right they're over vertical vertical polarization i haven't looked at that much so i don't know but let's untangle this let's get back to mmana because i'm going to start another instance of this and we'll fire up um it won't take me long because you know i'm quite quick at this so uh minus 5.2 and 5.2 this is a flat top dipole and we will add the source to the center of the wire and we'll put it up at 10 meters off the ground which is your average it really is your average dipole for joe soap all right bit of an swr here of 1.5 to 1 it doesn't matter so this is on 20 meter band now flat top not inverted v i'm, I'm sure I've done if not i will do another video on that let's stick on takeoff angles at the moment so at uh, i can reduce the size of these so we can probably get a better picture the two things together on the screen at once hold on a minute let's move that to there and that to there left is our dipole so at 10 degrees off the horizon it's telling me it's 1.7 10 degrees off the horizon here it's saying minus 1.7 so our what frequency are we on 14 and at five degrees off the horizon minus 3.8 five degrees off the horizon it says minus well, i didn't wasn't expecting these numbers actually 10 degrees 10 okay so in fact our flat top dipole at 10 meters 30 something feet would beat on transmit in these two planes right you've got to remember that five 
degrees from there to there, 6.9. So in two directions, it would be better than this, our vertical. And then for all of this, it'd be worse. Unless you could rotate it. That would be all right, wouldn't it? But bearing in mind, that's 10 metres. If you just brought it down to 8 metres above the ground, forget the fact that it says low loss, no loss there, it doesn't matter. This is now 8 metres off the horizon at 5 degrees. Wait, minus 6.6. .6. So you can see every, every metre counts, doesn't it? So that's interesting. What about at 9 then? 9 metres off the ground. Right, we would beat just, I would have thought, 75. So we're more or less equal between the dipole on the left in two directions only and this one here, which is uh, minus 5.9. Interesting. Uh, we, should we invert it for it now, just for the hell of it, while we're doing this? Hold on then, X, Y. You just split this into, just divide wire into two pieces, okay? Probably enough. <laughs> Do that. Um, so now we just uh, did you X. Where's that? So that used to be about five point inverted V. Put it to there. Doesn't really matter. Is that better? No, that's too long. There we go. Typical inverted V configuration. All right. We need to move that wire one beginning. I'm just guessing. No, it's the end. <laughs> Wire one end. Now then, I'm going to leave, need, need to leave these bottom bits off the ground because it said here Z two and a half. So we're two and a half meters down off the ground anyway. So we need to lift the center up two and a half. Now we're on the bottom of the ground. So then we'll add another 7.5. So we'll make it 10 meters to the top. So let's have a think about this. This point here is now going to be 10 meters off the ground. Yes, all right, average average big tree, all right? So let's see what this plot does. And I can cheat here. I can just say, show me elevation at five degrees and I can run around here now. So in fact, your inverted V um, in two directions, minus 5.4, it says there. And over here we are, if you remember, minus 5.9. So your inverted V at 10 metres off the ground. Um, yeah, it's just average. I mean, you know, look, <laughs> let's just think about this. 3 dB, you are hardly going to notice the difference. It's like going from 50 watts to 100. All right. 6 dB, you can detect, by the way. That is an S point, and there's just a little bit more. I mean, you can detect 3 dB. I can, certainly on SSB, because there's just a little bit more torque power. It's just, it's just they've gone from eight to nine, you know, on the volume control. It's just a little bit thing. 6 dB, you can definitely hear that the voice level comes up, it's more of a smack to it. So, you know, sometimes we look at these dBs and we, we, we start to worry ourselves a little bit too much, I think. And that's the other thing is, these antenna manufacturers, I mean, I know I'm an antenna manufacturer, but I'm kind of an odd one out. They'll tell you if this was a pretend aerial, you know, they would tell you that this has got, and it says it here, 6.1 dBi. They would, they would advertise that as an antenna giving you 6.1, 6.2 dB gain maximum, you know. Wouldn't tell you it's at 32, 33 degrees off the horizon, which, by the way, is good for about 1,000 miles, all right, as particularly on 40 metres. Rest of the time, as we saw in the previous graphs, nobody's going to hear you on that gain. So it's back to three to eight dB, three to eight degrees. It's down here somewhere, which is at minus five. Because if we do everything at five, we can then baseline everything. So I can't remember who it was now, but there was one guy over on Josh's Discord who just couldn't quite grasp why I was doing everything at five degrees. Because he's telling me that, yeah, but the signal's coming in at 12. The signal's coming in at 20. But the majority of the DX, and the thing is, as you can see on the um, vertical here on the right hand side, if it's coming in on the, on, you know, but if I can squeeze a little bit more out at five degrees off the horizon, I don't think we're going to lose much up here, which is 25 degrees. 
you know, it, it'll, it'll always be about, you know, one, two, three, four dB up there, all right? Unless you do something a bit weird. So it's not like we're going to lose all the top end, all right? Even if you measure like a five eighths or a three quarter wave, there's still some pretty good gain there. You'll never just by doing AB switches. It's like these people who do AB comparisons on CB aerials. There's going to be next to nothing of it, I promise you, unless you've got something very drastic going on. In fact, I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to get, um, we'll build, we'll take my IMAX and get a game master and we'll do a side by side. I just want to dig into the CB argument that one aerial or antenna is better than another. We'll do a ground mounted as well, because for DX, point to point, to point you need literally zero degrees off the horizon because you're talking to a trucker five miles up the road. There's no skip involved in that. We need to now get line of sight, okay? And a ground mounted vertical isn't, isn't going to be as good for line of sight. We need a bit of height to get down to him. However, for DX, you might find <laughs> sporadic E and stuff that your ground mounted 10 meter quarter wave outperforms all the fancy um, game masters and IMAX 2000s and silver rods and all that. Listen, this channel is all about demystifying and giving you little bits of knowledge. I am not a professor and this is not a lesson in takeoff angles. This is you, that you now understand a little bit more that you can go away and do your own research and things make a bit more sense. All right. That's what this channel is all about. When I do the serious stuff like this, we've got a lot of fun stuff we do as well. All right. And as usual, if you like all this baloney that I get up to, you know, hit the subscribe button. At the time of recording, I'm only 200 people off 30,000. And that's really nice, big confidence boost for me. So help me out, would you? <laughs> uh, and if not, if you're already subscribed, give it a thumbs up. That'll alert other people. It's a fine video. All right. Enjoy your radio. I've been having a blast as usual here and we've got a little end fed project that I'm working on so we'll come up with that soon alright see you next time bye for now